Welcome to Upfront, a show where we sit down with influential members of our communities. And we're joined right now by Kootenai Ice President and General Manager Matt Cockle. Matt, how are you doing? How are you doing? Good Pleasure to meet you. You too. So you've had a, a road that has taken you through a, a few different uh, directions throughout your career, uh, both your playing career and your post-playing career. Talk about where it all began for you. What are your earliest memories with the game of hockey? Yeah, I mean, I think like most Canadians, um, it's a great game. We're passionate about it. Uh, you know, like uh, a lot of young kids, um, you know, my dad got me into the game at a young age and, you know, really had a, enjoyed it and, and, and played it and it was great social uh, as well as, uh, you know, I don't know that when I was a young player, I took it too seriously. You know, when you're six, seven, eight, kind of go out there, have fun and, you know, outdoor rinks and growing up in Calgary at the time, the Olympics were there in 88. And so it was, and the Flames had won the, won the cup in 89. So, I mean, there was a lot of energy and excitement and, you know, just really enjoyed uh, some really good memories playing up. In Bull Valley Flames was uh, my, my team when I was, uh, when I was young. Right on. Were you always a goaltender? No, not at all. Actually, by chance, I, uh, my dad coached me and uh, I wasn't uh, the best skater on the, the team by any stretch and you know I remember we were sitting in the room one time and the coaches were looking for volunteers I might have been nine or ten and I put my hand up and tried it and I think some stuff hit me the pucks hit me a couple times and uh, I just kept playing and I wasn't uh, and this would be rare now I think it was 11 or 12 before I actually was full-time uh, playing playing the position whereas you see kids specializing a little bit early and you know I think there's a lot of value to playing different positions, different sports. Uh, maybe that's a different show at some time. <laughs> Talk about uh, development and, and uh, you know, and kids and the value of doing all those things. But uh, yeah, so then, then from there, I continued on and um, it was a you know, fun game, leads to a lot of things and meet a lot of great people. So when you first started playing gold, did you like it right away? And were you serious? When did you start to get serious about it? I think I had trouble keeping up. You know, so at the time, you know, goalies now are the best skaters on the team. Uh, and uh, I definitely wasn't when I was growing up. And I think I like the fact that I was, uh, you know, maybe okay at it a little bit. <laughs> and uh, uh, just for whatever reason, enjoy the equipment, enjoy the position. And, uh, you know, Mike Vernon was playing for the Flames. And I remember liking Mike Vernon a lot uh, playing and just something you fell, fell into. So then you find yourself at a WHL camp. and where you, you went on to play three seasons for four different teams, so you got a good tour of the WHL, spent time in Saskatoon, Seattle, Regina, and Spokane. Talk about going into that first WHL camp. How, how intimidating was that as a list player? Well, things are very different now. I would say clueless would be a good word to describe uh, how I went into it. So my, my en entry into the Western Hockey League was a little bit unique. Um, my family had moved uh, to Newmarket, Ontario. Um, and uh, sp I think three years or so we, we, we lived there and I was playing for a team called the York Simcoe uh, Express, um, which now would be known as the team Connor McDavid played for, so <laughs> <laughs> a little more popular now. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, an area AAA team and, um, you know, I w did a lot of kids and I wasn't getting a lot of exposure and uh, it's not like I was being invited to a lot of camps. My family moved out uh, to Winnipeg when I was 16 and uh, I came and tried out for a junior A team and made it. And uh, so that was really exciting as a 16 year old. Um, and somebody saw me play somewhere, invited me to a, a camp in Saskatoon. So I'd missed, missed the Bantam draft and kind of just found my way to somehow end up at a camp. And just uh, when I went to Saskatoon's camp, um, they never sent me home. So I, uh, I stayed and played and it was a great experience and really enjoyed my time in the Western Hockey League. And yeah, what are your memories of the league? That you, that you cherish from your playing days? You know, I think you, if you talk to anybody that, that's played in the league, they'll tell you, you know, the guys you meet, you still stay in touch with them. You know, um, it's some of the, you know, I think the best years of your life. Um, I was fortunate, I like to say a lot of teams wanted me, but I played for a number of teams. There's two ways you can look at that, right? Glass half full, so, um, and, and, you know, Billets is, uh, just some, some of the memories, different families I lived with, staying in touch with them over the years. Um, you know, being at their kids' weddings, different, just the relationship part of it, I think, is, uh, is great. And then I was fortunate to have my education paid for because of my time in the Western Hockey League. So 
Um, have great memory in the Memorial Arena here. So when I was playing with the Regina Pats, um, we won, just so that's on the record. <laughs> <laughs> One of the few games we did win that year, but uh, just the energy and passion uh, of some of the different communities. Did and you get into, did you play in that game? I did, and uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was a great experience. And uh, it was, um, you know, I remember, you know, there was, arena was packed and fans were excited and, um, you know, it's a great place to be. So you remember those glory days here? Yeah, I mean, we were passing through, right? So in Regina, we might have played here once or twice, a, you know, um, a year, depending on the schedule. But, uh, you know, you could feel the energy and the excitement in the community. And, uh, I, you know, you're walking through the people are yeah. through the stand, right, to get to get out on the ice. And you knew that you were in for a rough ride coming to, coming to Kootenai. So then 1997, the NHL entry draft, you find yourself going in the fifth round. 117th overall to the Vancouver Canucks. Yeah. Did you anticipate that? What were you hearing leading up to the draft? You, the, the whole year for me, that year I remember it being a blur. You know, it's not, thing, things are different now. Um, there was central scouting at the time. Certainly you have some awareness. There was a top prospects game that had just been introduced, um, but nowhere near the level of exposure that, that some, of, some of the players uh, deal with now. Um, so, so it was a different experience. So I, I, I wouldn't say that I was expecting to be drafted. I was excited when I, when I was. I was aware that I was a player that, that might have been. I didn't go to the draft, um, just not knowing if and when. Um, and then the training camp experiences were, were great. I mean, some people may remember, well, I mean, Mike Keenan was a coach one of those years, and that's when Linden and Messier and Bertuzzi and Naslin were all in, you know, kind of with the Canucks, they had some really good players. And uh, my first shot I faced in camp was, Messier coming down the wing with the leg up <laughs> and uh, uh, he hit me, I think, right in the, I didn't move though, like I was just, it just hit me, so <laughs> I can't take credit for, <laughs> can't take credit for stopping it, but at least I can, you know, say something hit me, I can't, so. <laughs> and, uh, and you were, of course, drafted by the late, great Pat Quinn, mm -hmm. and talk about your, uh, your encounters with, with Pat Quinn. So, um, I didn't, didn't obviously know Pat well, uh, other than meeting him at, at camp. Um, but uh, I did get a chance to work with his daughter, Callie, for a couple of years as part of my involvement with Hockey Canada and the female high performance program. And uh, my one Pat Quinn story um, was we were at the World Championships and uh, he was there supporting Callie. And we had a bit of a reception after for some of the families. And uh, Callie said, hey, you meet my dad. Come, come see my dad. Uh, it's, you know, you wouldn't have seen him for a number of years. I said, Callie, I'm not sure he remembers me, but he did. So we went over there and Pat's got those big hands and yeah. I said uh, hey, hey Pat look I'm I'm sorry you wasted that pick on me <laughs> <laughs> you know didn't, didn't play obviously uh, um, um, for, for the for Canucks the Canada, yeah. and uh, he said you know what Matt uh, it's, it's great to see that uh, clearly clear you're a better coach than you were a player so that was uh, a fun interaction so then in uh, 2000 you decided to to use your your scholarship that you obtained through the Western Hockey League and you attended the University of Manitoba where you completed an, an honors degree in marketing and small business finance. Mm -hmm. How much did that uh, play a role in where you are today? I think any education is important and um, you know really passionate about that, passionate about it for our kids uh, that'll, be, that'll be playing here and uh, you know when you go through university or college I think sometimes you're, you're finding your way what you're passionate about and so those were areas that you know, we're pretty diversified that I thought, you know, maybe you can do some different things with it. Um, you know, I'd be, I'd be lying if I told you I thought, you know, when I was in college, I'd end up um, kind of maybe on the path that, that I was. At the time, I just was really excited to get an education and see, see where life would take me. I started coaching at a really, you know, life takes you different paths. I, I, I decided to go to school versus play pro and, um, and use my scholarship. And, um, started coaching at a young age and was really passionate about that and, and that kind of got me going in terms of player development and, and those sorts of things. And from there you would get into the corporate world where you would uh, meet your partner with the Kootenai Ice, Greg Fettis, and talk about, uh, about what you did after university uh, from, from that to uh, True North. So um, Greg is uh, I, I met through, again through hockey. So um, you know I was playing with his now brother-in-law played for the uh, briefly Winnipeg South Blues uh, junior A team in, in Manitoba and uh, his name is Adam, Adam Oleska and we played together and uh, very good friends and uh, to this day and, and Adam um, you know a couple years later had uh, 
said to, to Greg, um, his brother-in-law, geez, there's a guy I know that might at the time help you in, with this outsourcing company. And so we sat down to have a meeting and Greg actually, uh, you know, at the end of the meeting offered me a, a job. I'd been doing some different things uh, prior to that and I actually turned him down. I said, you know, it's just, this isn't uh, something I'm quite, quite into. And uh, um, came back with a different idea and it was really exciting. Um, and uh, so it was a fun ride. I worked uh, directly with Greg for nine years uh, at a company called 24 seven in touch. Uh, while still pursuing uh, a lot of great experience as it relates to, to hockey. You know, a lot of people that get into the hockey world, it's, it's not a full-time thing, right? So you're doing other things and trying to make it work and follow, you know, things you're passionate about. So a lot of support from family and from some, a lot of people, and Greg included, uh, you know, while I was working for him, I pursued, um, worked with the Wee Kings, I worked with uh, Hockey Canada, was a member of an Olympic staff, and uh, extremely supportive throughout. Um, the company that Greg founded, very, very successful, and um, it was a great nine years. What can you tell Kootenai Ice fans now who are just starting to become familiar with Greg about his passion for the game and, 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 and what he, uh, just how much he loves the game of hockey? Hey, player development, player experience. We both have young families. Um, you know, seeing the kids on the ice grow, develop, learn. Um, I think we both, uh, you know, very similar uh, in all those areas and, and share those passions and um, I think the biggest thing that, that Greg, uh, Greg and I both when we we're looking at um, you know this, this idea and uh, is we love the idea of community, we love the idea of engagement, I mean that's what 24-7 in touch was, was built on was engagement and uh, we saw a lot of similarities there um, in terms of our past experience and then the ability to involve the community, be a part of that, be a part of something that helps uh, development player experience. And then, you know, in terms of high performance, both of us are extremely passionate about, about that. Um, we're competitive, um, but, you know, at the same time, we want uh, everybody that's part of our program uh, to be an example in terms of where they go in life, what they do, surround them with everything possible to be successful with whatever they decide to, to do, whether it's by choice or, or things lead them a certain direction. and. Um, you know, those are the things that we talk a lot about. And speaking of success, uh, you mentioned Brandon and Team Canada. So, uh, the Brandon, a member of the Brandon Wheat Kings coaching staff, you went to two Memorial Cups, 2010, 2016. Mm -hmm. Then you find yourself with the Canadian women's Olympic hockey team, 2014 yeah. Sochi, uh, where you get a gold medal out of yeah. it. What was that experience like? Uh, you know, incredible highlight for sure. Um, life, lifetime highlights. Um, I had worked and assisted um, with the high performance program with Hockey Can on the female side for while well working with the Wee Kings for a number of years. Um, you know, Mel Davidson is uh, an incredible woman and uh, she, the things she's done with that program and the level of professionalism and people that are a part of it, uh, I was just really thrilled to, to be a part of that group. Um, amazing journey. I mean, the game, I think, will probably go down as one of the most incredible games in, in Canadian hockey history with, uh, you know, the goalie out, hitting the post, coming back, three, you know, all those things. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you learn a lot going through it and as part of a great staff and working with, uh, you know, Kevin Deneen and uh, the great group of players. I mean, those are things that, you, you know, lifetime memories for sure. Absolutely. We've got to take a quick break, but when we come back, the deal that would bring you to Cranbrook. Welcome back to Upfront. Our guest is Kootenai Ice President and General Manager Matt Cockle. Now, May 1st, 2017, another very big day in your career. Yeah. Talk about uh, that day. Yeah, it was, I mean, exciting, you know, things that uh, I don't think growing up, going through school, all those things that uh, I would have ever thought, you know, would have had an opportunity like this. I mean... Um, of course, we should mention that is the day that uh, the deal was finalized to purchase right. the Kootenai Ice. Yeah, so that was uh, my first day at work, was, was May 1st. So uh, remember first day in the office, we, first thing we, Greg and I did uh, together was we called all the players and, and that was great. We wanted them to know that uh, we're gonna be here, that we're interested in their feedback and you know, player experience, fan experience are things that we, we talk a lot about. And you know, our day by day, um, wish I had another month. Mm -hmm. um, you know, over the summer at the time to work through everything, but we're trying to do as much as we can to create a great atmosphere, a great experience, and 
you know, I think they only know one way to do things and that's to the best of our, our ability. And, you know, part of that is we're going to trip along the way as we try different things and uh, we're really interested to get feedback and then we can keep evolving, trying different things and, and hopefully, you know, this can be something that uh, the entire community, the East Kootenai region can be excited about and feel a part of. And to me, to me, that would be really exciting. Talk about that that process that you went through to get to May first. Was it was it a stressful? Uh, were there stressful moments? Uh, you know, what sort of emotions, range of emotions, did you go through? Uh, yeah, it's a, I mean, going? first big family decision, right? So, uh, wonderful wife, very supportive, three kids, uh, settled in, uh, love being here, um, but the, but that's a consideration. Absolutely. Um, uh, really excited that we had you know, place to go to vacation. And I, I've always uh, said this a few times, like to me, if you can do a job you love in a place and you'd va place you'd vacation, I mean, that to me, that sounds pretty good. So uh, yeah, just, just all excitement. That would be, that would be the word. Um, you know, at the same time, you kind of look, there's some work to do. There's a lot of work to do and we're just, uh, we're just getting started and we're not, we're not shy to do the work and, you know, hopefully the, the folks in, in Cranbrook and East Kootenai region are seeing we're doing the work, that we're, that we're working hard at it, and we'll sure be appreciative of any support we get. Yeah, let's talk about the, the work ahead. What is the biggest change that you had to make? I don't think um, it, it, it's one thing. You know, I think in a community, uh, the collective effort of all the small things will lead to something amazing. Um, but the very first place uh, to start is with staff. And I think if you're around great people, you can do great things. And uh, we worked hard to put together in the front office, as well as our coaching staff, but we feel a tremendous staff. And in order to do, have initiatives in the community to reach out to do different things, um, you need some capacity, some human capacity and skill to, to do that. Um, so, so that was really the first place to start was, was building a team. And we're really proud of the team that, uh, that, we, that we have. And uh, looking ahead, um, you know, we're, we're just getting started. We're really feeling like we're just getting our feet under us. We're, we're working hard at it and um, we'll keep evolving. And you mentioned the need for, for, for more time uh, when you first got going. Mm -hmm. um, May 1st is, is a little bit uh, mm -hmm. late to, to do all the stuff that you yeah. needed to do. So were you busy right away and how did you sort of hit the ground running? Did, yeah, so you, first day like? we're, you know, kind of uh, worked for a great, Tremendous organization in True North and great people um, for two years and, and was um, fortunate to see the industry and how it works from, from people that I think are, are second to none and doing great jobs. So certainly felt like I had um, a pretty good handle on the, the, the fundamentals of what, what needed to happen. Um, but then there's a the personalization of it and, and the engagement and that's making everything fit um, and, and feel uh, like it's something that everybody in this community can be a part of and that's going to take some time and us listening, learning, trying different things. Um, so we're working at it, we're, we're day by day uh, for sure. Um, but you, you know, you have a checklist, you work through the checklist, um, so you have a staff. We had, some, we had a draft, which was pretty important, uh, right out of the gate on, on May 4th with our, with our staff. Uh, the import draft, which is a really big day for us and we're really excited about uh, the, the players that are excited to be here and, and play for, for this team and for this community. Um, then you look at season, season seat drive, uh, drive to 25, so corporate support and then you're, you're a game execution. So, I mean, you just, you just keep working through it and um, hopefully along the way, uh, don't drop the ball. <laughs> yeah. What's your message to fans who, uh, who are a little bit leery after everything they've been through about the, the long-term future of this, of this franchise in this community? Mm -hmm. Um, especially, you know, Winnipeg is a, is a city that uh, it does not have a WHL team. It, it has been mentioned in the past. Uh, so, so to those fans who, who are wondering, you know, just about the long-term future in, in this community, what, what, would, what would the message be? I think our first day was May 1st. We're excited to be here. Um, hopefully our actions are demonstrating our level of excitement. Uh, we're working hard at it. Um, and, and my hope is if, if we set an example in terms of our work ethic and what we're doing and um, you know, really show the level of care that we have for the community, um, that, that there'll be reciprocation and that'll create an amazing energy that we can all, all be a part of. And uh, you know, so I think 
what we can control are, are the things that we do on a daily basis and, uh, and, and treat everybody um, who, who, who does come to support us in different ways, uh, just show our appreciation. All right, well, we got to take a, another break, but uh, when we come back, a new look for the Kootenai Ice. More with Matt Cockle after this. Welcome back to Upfront. Our guest is Kootenai Ice President and General Manager Matt Cockle. Now, one of the first acts of, of business for you was uh, to update the brand, update yeah. the look and the, the logo. Yeah. Uh, talk about the plan there and, and, uh, and why that was important. And, and actually, we have a jersey. Let's, uh, can we get yeah. that, that jersey here? We'll have a look. How do you feel about the way it turned out? You know, we're, we're really pleased with it. I, I, you know, we worked quickly, but uh, we're happy with how it turned out. Um, you know, one of the reasons the rebrand was really important to us is um, fresh start. We're moving forward. We're looking ahead. We want to build something really special, and, and we felt uh, a, a brand um, that was new, different, um, was something that was really important. So, uh, you know, worked with, worked with a company that um, had some experience with in the past, and they did a they did a great job. And um, you know, so we have uh, here. I don't know if a lot of people have have noticed yet, but subtle that the ice is actually yet straight into the the, the Yeti uh, fur there. I mean, you know, the history here. That that's something that doesn't go anywhere. The history is here. The great teams that have been here, the great players, and and we're going to work hard with the alumni and and really try and have people come back and embrace uh, what was a real special place for them when they played here. Um, and the logo that was here prior will certainly recognize at different points, um, but we're, we're going to move forward uh, with everybody in terms of a fresh start, and, and this is, a, I think, is something that symbolizes that. Now, uh, obviously, you guys are excited to, uh, to unveil this logo. What has the feedback and what have you heard from, uh, from the general public about the logo? I think it's been... Uh, you know, it's been positive. I think uh, it's a lot of history, so you always worry when you do something like that, um, you know, respectful and the legacy that is here. Um, and, and, and we are going to make sure through the alumni, through other events, that, uh, that we're, we're definitely celebrating all of the great uh, success that's been here. Um, but, you know, we wanted to, uh, this is a place where when I played here, you didn't want to come play here. This was a place where it was edgy, the fans were on top of you. You knew that you were coming into a tough place to play. And, um, you know, we want uh, this to be a tough place to play, have a bit of edge to it. And uh, so we're happy with how it turned out. And you were the goalie, so you got to hear uh, from all the fans just I, behind you. I, I had so many, th I, I couldn't even repeat the things I was called when I, when I came here. It was, uh, <laughs> but you loved it. You loved the energy and the excitement. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going to do that here hand in hand with the the new merchandise is making it more available mm -hmm. we've done a complete renovation in our office and and want to make it a place that's welcoming the doors open um so so come in anytime and if there's something something you like um then hopefully people will be excited to wear wear the ice gear and uh wear it proudly how important is it to you to get the merchandise and your brand out to the other communities uh, that make up the east kootenai region uh, extremely important so we've started the process, I mean, the work will continue in trying to establish relationships, partnerships that, you know, you, you want, it has to be meaningful. I mean, that's really important to me. So, so doing something without engagement attached to it, um, it doesn't have the same meeting. I think we have, uh, and, our, and our players, they want to do things. Our, our coaches want to do things. They want to get out in the community. So, of course, we have a busy schedule, but with good planning, great staff, and partnerships where we take some time to figure out the best way to engage and uh, to give back and especially as it relates to um, you look at kids and coaches and mentors I mean we have a I think a phenomenal staff with a lot of NHL experience Olympic experience and to the extent that the community can benefit from that um, to help development in all sports and in, including hockey in this region uh, we sure would be excited to be a part of that. At the end of the day when you sit back and you look at year number one mm -hmm. when we get to May 1st 2018 what will it take to make that a successful year for you? You know, I think um, those are goals that I, that I, in terms of statements, would, would shy away from. We've said that uh, 
every decision we're going to make is we want to be progressive. Um, it's, it's very important. We want to look ahead and move forward, but progressive in everything we do from players to how we're engaging the community to corporate partnerships, season seats, service where we can impact that through partnerships. Um, at Western Financial Place, we want to be community focused, so it's going to take some time to develop partnerships and we want to be patient to make sure that they're the right ones for everybody. Um, and, that, and that's something that takes some time. And the other thing is a, a pro environment. And a pro environment is not just what we're doing for, for the players, for our players um, in, in this community, but it's also what we're doing at the game, how we're treating our fans, um, all of those sorts of things. So, so that's how we're operating, making decisions right now as a staff. And I think we'll look back at the end of the year and um, evaluate where we go. Um, you know, it's uh, every day is a, a fun adventure. And that's something that uh, you look at, at True North, your experience with True North and, and the Winnipeg Jets do very well. Have you taken a lot uh, in that regard from your experience with the True North? Well, I, I've said this to a few people. Um, I mean, that market is the smallest market in the NHL. And, and the reason it has the best fan experience, in my opinion, in, in the NHL is because everybody in that community, they, they participate, they want to participate, it's, it, they feel a part of it. And uh, I sure feel like there's a lot of, lot of opportunity here to do, do something similar. And when you do that, you can accomplish something that is incredible, something you could never accomplish in, um, in a different market. And that's, you know, something that, you know, in the back of my mind, I feel I've seen it. I, I've played here, I've seen it, uh, you know, in uh, when the team, you know, when the team first came here. And, uh, but we need to look ahead and we need to engage uh, folks that are going to allow us to build a fan base that um, is energetic, exciting, and at the same time um, diversified um, so that everybody, everybody can participate. All right, well, Matt Cockle, thanks so much for joining us on Upfront, and we look forward to uh, what lies ahead. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you.